Hello students, I am Pratik Bhaseen, your economics coach and I am back again with the fifth chapter of introductory microeconomics, class 12th. So in the previous session, we were discussing about what is market equilibrium and how is equilibrium price determined. So we started that equilibrium price is the price at which quantity demanded and quantity supplied are equal. No price more than the equilibrium price or less than the equilibrium price can be stable because it lead either to the situation of excess supply or the situation of excess demand. And hence equilibrium will only be established at the price where quantity demand and quantity supplied are equal. So let's move ahead and study some special cases. Today I will be combining the concepts of elasticity of demand and supply with market equilibrium. Elasticity of demand and supply as we have already studied is actually the degree of responsiveness of change in quantity demand due to change in price. Similarly, elasticity of supply is the degree of responsiveness of change in quantity supply due to change in price. We had studied about two special cases in elasticity of demand and elasticity of supply where the supply or demand curve was parallel to the x or y axis. It was perfectly elastic demand, perfectly elastic supply, perfectly inelastic demand and perfectly inelastic supply. So today we will be combining both these concepts and see what will be the effect on the demand or supply curve when the other one is held as elastic or inelastic and what will be the change on equilibrium price or equilibrium quantity. So the first case that I have for you is demand being perfectly elastic and we will change the supply. So because demand is perfectly elastic, the demand curve will be parallel to x axis. So I have made two diagrams with two cases that is supply shifts out or supply shifts in. I have assumed demand to be perfectly elastic, hence it is parallel to x axis. Because there is the supply curve which is upward sloping, so the equilibrium will be attained where demand and supply curve intersect each other. This will be our equilibrium price and this will be our equilibrium quantity. So our equilibrium price is OP and equilibrium quantity is OQ. Now we have to ascertain the effect on equilibrium point, equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity. So when supply shifts out, this means that supply will shift towards the right. So let us shift the supply curve rightwards from S to S1. This will be my new equilibrium point where equilibrium quantity will increase from OQ to OQ1 but my equilibrium price will remain constant. So in this case price does not changes but the quantity increases. Moving on to my next case is supply shifts in. So let us draw the original supply curve represented by the letter S. When we shift the supply curve in this means we are shifting the supply curve leftward. So let us shift it leftwards. The earlier equilibrium point was E, equilibrium price was OP and equilibrium quantity was attained at OQ. So when supply curve shifts leftward from S to S1, we attain the new equilibrium point to be E1 because this is the point where demand and supply curves intersect each other. The equilibrium price remains the same but equilibrium quantity decreases from OQ to OQ1. So these were the two cases where demand was perfectly elastic and we had ascertained the effect on equilibrium price and quantity when supply changes. Moving ahead, now we have supply being perfectly elastic and demand shifting out or in. So if this is our supply curve, the demand curve would be a downward sloping curve intersecting the supply curve at point E which is our equilibrium point where equilibrium price is OP and equilibrium quantity is OQ. 
this means that the demand curve will shift towards the right. Intersecting the supply curve at point E1, where equilibrium price remains the same, but equilibrium quantity increases from OQ to OQ1. Now moving on to my second case is supply being perfectly elastic and demand shifting in. So let us draw the original demand curve which is D being intersecting at point E which is the equilibrium point. This is my equilibrium price and Q would denote my equilibrium quantity. Now when demand curve shifts in this means that demand curve shifts leftward from D to D1. This will intersect the supply curve at point E1 where equilibrium quantity decreases from OQ to OQ1. Now we will move on to the cases where demand or supply will be perfectly inelastic. So a perfectly inelastic curve is parallel to the Y axis. So I have this demand curve which is parallel to the Y axis and then we have cases supply shifting out or supply shifting in. So this is our supply curve which is an upward sloping curve because of law of supply. This will be our equilibrium point because this is the point where demand and supply curve intersect each other. This will be our equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity will be OQ. As the question says that we have to shift the supply curve outwards, this means that supply curve will shift towards the right. So shifting the supply curve towards the right will give us a new supply curve which will be S1. This will intersect the demand curve at point E1 which is the new equilibrium point. Now equilibrium price will decrease from OP to OP1. In the second case we have to shift the supply curve in. So let us draw the original supply curve which will intersect the demand curve at point E which is our equilibrium point. So our equilibrium price is OP and equilibrium quantity is OQ. Shifting our supply curve in means shifting our supply curve leftwards from S to S1. Now the new equilibrium point is attained at point E1 where equilibrium price increases from OP to OP1. So in these cases, the quantity has not changed but price has increased or decreased. Moving ahead, we have supply being perfectly elastic and demand shifting out or demand shifting in. So if we have a demand curve, a downward sloping demand curve because of application of law of demand, this intersects the supply curve at point E which is the equilibrium point. At this point, we have the equilibrium price as OP and equilibrium quantity as OQ. Because we have to shift the demand curve outwards, it would lead to a rightward shift in demand. This will intersect at point E1 which is the new equilibrium point and hence the equilibrium price will increase from OP to OP1. Similarly, when demand shifts in, we have the demand curve intersecting the supply curve at point E where equilibrium price is OP and equilibrium quantity is OQ. Then we have demand curve being shifted inside. This means a leftward shift in the demand curve. The new equilibrium point will be E1 and equilibrium price will be OP1 that is it will decrease from OP to OP1. So in these cases the price may increase or decrease but the quantity would remain constant. So to conclude we have that when demand or supply is perfectly elastic price remains the same. So price will be same but quantity may increase or decrease. But in the cases where demand or supply is perfectly inelastic, we have that quantity will be constant, but price 
may increase or may decrease because they are inelastic, perfectly inelastic and a perfectly inelastic curve says irrespective of increase or decrease in price, the quantity remains constant. But a perfectly elastic curve says that irrespective of change in quantity, the price would remain constant. Now let us move on to the application of the market equilibrium. Where does government intervene when the market fails to allocate the goods and services? So sometimes in the market we see that some necessary commodities are being sold at an unnecessary higher price. This affects the consumers. So we will be studying about government intervention in some special situations. So the first situation is when the price is high and the consumers are unable to afford it. So in this case, the government levies a maximum price ceiling. Now let's suppose if a necessary good like onion is being sold at an exorbitantly higher price of rupees 100. This will lead to poor people not buying it or doing away with the demand of onion. Now what will happen? This will lead to force out the consumers out of the market. Should the government do anything? Yes, because onion being a necessary commodity, the government sets a price lower than the market price. This will benefit the consumers. So what happens is the consumer sets a price which is much lower than the equilibrium price determined by the market. Let us suppose it to be 25. But when the government sets a price of rupees 25, it leads to another problem. And that problem is, we had already discussed, is excess demand. Now excess demand of onion will be there. This is because the producers are only willing to sell the quantity, the desired quantity at rupees 100. But the government has announced the price to be rupees 25. Now more number of consumers would be willing to buy onion, but lesser number of producers would be willing to sell onion at the prices stipulated by the government. What will happen? It will lead to black marketing of onion because the producers would stock up their stock of onion and won't sell it at a price lesser than 100. This will create an artificial scarcity of the onion in the market and hence it will raise up the prices of onion back to 100 rupees. So the whole purpose is defeated because the government wanted the producer to sell the onion at rupees 25. But due to excess demand and competition among buyers, the prices shot up. This happened because the producers tend to black market the product. Now what will happen? So now the government must take some steps. So the government generally takes two steps. The first being its public distribution system. You must be knowing that the government also procures some part of the agricultural produce of the farmer and stores it in the Food Corporation of India's go down. So Food Corporation of India is actually a storehouse for the agricultural produce being purchased by the government. So the stock with Food Corporation of India should be distributed among the common people or poor people at the prices declared by the government, in this case being 25. And the next step that the government is going to take is check black marketing and hoarding. Hoarding refers to illegally stocking up the good and creating an artificial scarcity so that there can be black marketing of the good. So the government should conduct raids and free up the stocks with the producers in their warehouses. This stock should be used by Food Corporation of India and then to the public distribution system to be distributed among the poor. This will lead to welfare of the consumers. 
So, under maximum price ceiling, we study a case where the government sets a price below the equilibrium price. This is in the benefit of the consumers. Moving ahead, we have another concept which is minimum support price. The government is there to benefit consumers as well as producers. So, for benefiting consumers, the government tries to set a price lower than the equilibrium price. But for benefiting producers, the government sets a price which is more than the equilibrium price. You must be wondering, how come the government can set a price more than equilibrium price? This would also affect the welfare of the consumers. So, I will take an example and explain you this concept. So, now let us suppose the price in the market is 100 rupees for a certain commodity. In this case, the government is setting a price more than 100, that is 200. Now, what will happen is, it will lead to a situation of excess supply because more producers would be willing to sell their produce at a price higher than the equilibrium price, but the demand would be lesser. As this will lead to a situation of excess supply, there will be a competition among sellers and the prices will come down again. So, the whole purpose is defeated. So, how does government maintain this price in the market? So, let us move to a area where more agricultural goods are produced, most probably a rural area. So, how does this agricultural distribution system works? How does agricultural marketing system works? So, there is a chain from farmer to the ultimate consumer which is involved in the movement of these goods. So, what happens is the farmer produces wheat. This wheat is then purchased by a middleman. This middleman is also known as an agent. This middleman then sells this produce to a wholesaler. Then this wholesaler sells this produce to a retailer and ultimately this retailer sells it to the final consumer. So, this is the minimum number of people that are involved in the movement of agricultural goods. Now, more the number of people that are involved, higher will be the price of the goods because it will include the margins of all the persons involved. So, now let us suppose the farmer sells the crop produced to the middleman at rupees 50. This happens because the farmer is unaware of the prices prevailing in the market. Middleman tries to exploit the farmer in this case. Because he is unaware of the prices, he informs that in the cities, the prices of your crops are not up to the mark. So, I will only give you 50 rupees. And then the middleman sells this at rupees 250, taking the entire 200 rupees margin for himself. The wholesaler sells this produce to the retailer for rupees 300, and the final consumer gets it for 400 rupees. Now, what has happened? Most of the profit has went to the middleman. He has earned 200 rupees. This 200 rupees could have been earned by the farmer, but he was exploited. So, what does government do? The government tries to enter the market as a middleman. So, before every sowing season, the government officially declares a price. This price is known as minimum support price or floor price. So, whenever a farmer has to decide that what crop should I grow in this season, he can always refer to the minimum support prices declared by the government. This will give him a guarantee that at the time of harvesting, what amount of income would be generated. So, let us suppose the government has given a price of rupees 250 at the time of sowing season, he will get that 250 rupees at least at the time of harvesting. Now, if any middleman wants to purchase the produce of the farmer, he has to offer at least an amount of rupees 250 because 
no farmer would like to sell at a price lesser than 250 because this is the minimum price that has been quoted by the government. Now what will happen? Every middleman has to offer at least 250 rupees to buy the product of the farmer. So let's study this with an example. So let's suppose the prices prevailing in the market were 50 rupees and the government sets the price at rupees 250. Now this would lead to excess supply of the product. So where will this excess supply of the farmers go? This excess supply of the agricultural produce would be directly bought by the government and then stored into the FCI go downs. This will be stored until that commodity is again needed in the market because when its price becomes higher. So what does government do? Government buys the product when its price is low, stores it in the food corporation of India's go down and then sells it when its price is high, thereby eliminating the fluctuations when price is low and when price is high and thereby safeguarding the interest of both consumer and producer. So let's summarize what we have studied today. In today's session, we discussed about some special cases whereby we combined the concepts of elasticity with the concepts of price equilibrium. Then we concluded that whenever the elasticity of demand or supply is perfect, there will be a change in quantity without any change in price. Similarly, when there is inelastic demand or supply, the quantity cannot change irrespective of change in price. Then we also studied about two special cases of government intervention in the free market economy. One was the maximum price ceiling and the other was minimum support price. The maximum price ceiling was in the welfare of the consumers. Similarly, minimum support price supported the producers. I hope you were able to get through this lecture. I'll meet you in the next class. Till then, bye and take care.